Arpeggios and arpeggio patterns are some of the most beautiful things that you can play on the piano. And this is a topic that gets requested a lot. People just love arpeggios and I understand why. They're stunning and they serve so many purposes because you can sound amazing while playing arpeggio patterns, but you can also be working on your dexterity, your speed, your hand independence, all of those things that are gonna help you to become an amazing piano player. So in this lesson, I've created a fun little practice routine for you. So you actually can just join in and play right along with me. I'm gonna talk you through every step. I'm gonna spend some time on each of the patterns so that you can actually play with me and have the experience of playing these awesome arpeggio patterns from their simple form uh, to a more complicated uh, set of exercises as we get to the end of the video. So don't worry, this is geared toward beginners. As we get to the end, there's a crazy challenge um, and it'll either make you laugh, maybe cry, I hope not cry. I just want you to have fun, but we'll see. <laughs> so let's get started. So let's start with our left hand. We're gonna be playing a C arpeggio, which uses C with our five, E with our three, G with our two, and C with our one. So we wanna get this shape. We're gonna be moving that to A minor. So A, C, E, and A, that shape. Then we'll be moving to F, so we're just kinda of skipping down again. F, A, C, and F. And then we'll travel back to C. So that's the order of the chord shapes or the arpeggio shapes that we're gonna be moving through. I'm gonna use my pedal because it sounds pretty. I'm gonna start by just rolling through a really delicate and gentle arpeggio on C. Two, three, four, five, six. Watching for that rotation in the wrist. Um, are you relaxed through the top of your hand? You definitely need to allow for some movement. And if you have small hands, make sure you're releasing this note each time you move to play the notes that are following it. And now let's move to A. So we're gonna end here on this E. Move to the A, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. A, C, E, A. One more time and we're going to shift to our F position. We move here, F. So each time we move, we kind of neglect to play the very bottom note of the pattern because that keeps us on time. Two, three, four, five, six, and back to C. Okay, so now that we're comfortable here, let's start to make it more musical. So we're gonna take our right hand and play C up high. So every time our five finger hits C, we'll play C here. And let's move positions now, A. into the mix. So that was the warm-up round. And you can see your hands are starting to feel it, you're building strength. We're adding that right hand in to just kind of make it a more musical experience. So the next pattern will have you playing C with your five, G with your two, so we're playing root, skipping the third, playing the fifth, playing the root, and then crawling over with your two finger, underneath with your three, that's not your three, that's your one, <laughs> and back down the way you came. So really important to let your wrist rotate here allow that movement this takes some practice so just think five two one two one two one two this movement is so good if you want to develop speed um, this is a great thing to practice speed on as you play faster it's also really good for dexterity because you're moving you're making those movements so join in with me this pattern is so pretty, you could improvise on this pattern for hours. And then we're gonna move it to A. It's the exact same pattern, the same spacing. A, E, A, B, C, and you come right back down the way you went. Let's do one more. And then we'll move to F. F. on this in a moment when we return to C. So 
I want you to get your right hand ready on the C position. We've got one more on F. Not counting, but I think that feels right. And back to C. So notice how I just played this lovely little fifth in my right hand. So every time I play C with my pinky finger in my left hand, I want you to try to play this fifth with the right. I'm hoping you're doing this with me. Let's try playing that fifth every time I play a C. And this is a bit of a mind bender. This is really good for your brain and your coordination and your hand independence. Even I'm having to think about it. Let's move to A. Don't move your left hand. Your left hand. Don't move your right hand. But I'm playing this little fifth in my right every time I'm hitting A in my left. to F. Keep your right hand where it is. Play that fifth every time you play an F now. One more time. C. Okay, so if you could do that, that's awesome. We're going to keep building on it. We're going to make this even more crazy. This time, I want you to do the same pattern in your left hand, but we're going to play a sus chord, and this is where things are going to sound so pretty. So you're going to play C, D, and G, while this hand does its magic. So, you just play and hold that chord. This is called a C, sus 2 chord in your right hand. Okay, now let's move both hands down, so A position here and A here. And try to add drama and dynamics if you can. I think it's time to move to F, so let's just do it. One more after this. And we're going to go back to C and we're going to do something crazy, so just watch this one. So we'll hang out here for a minute. So what I'm going to do, watch this. Ah! Let's try moving our left hand to A. Keep your right hand where it is. So each time I play a note with my left on the way up, I play a note with my right. So together, together, together. That's the slow down. Let's do two more. I should really count. We're keeping us all on our toes. Back to C. Two, three, four. We're gonna do two more. Last one. And we're gonna move our left hand. <laughs> I gotta focus. Focusing is so hard for me. Two more. Last one. And we're gonna move to F. Watch this. Ah, what did I do? I went up and then I just came back down. Whew, so let's take a quick moment to talk about this because this hand is just playing the same notes. C, D, G, D, C. But we're expecting this hand to do this while this hand is doing this movement. And that's why this play along lesson is going to be so good for you because the more you practice this and the more time you spend just kind of kind of making these patterns become a part of you, the easier this becomes. So this is like hand independence and coordination at its finest. So your left hand is doing something different than your right hand, but I want you to know that they're working together. So. Rhythmically speaking, together, 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 and hold. Let's do it again. Nice and slow. One more time. Actually, I lied. I want to make it an even four. Last one. Music teacher's famous last words. Okay, now let's do it faster. Just our left hand. I think it's time. A. Doesn't that sound pretty? One more. To F. Bring that four times. This is two, three, four, and back to C. Guess what we're going to do now? We're going to move both hands together. Ready to move your right?
right hand into A position. just a little bit further to take this because in the next step I want to start developing our right hand. We're going to do something a little different with our right hand arpeggio and then we're going to bring both of these skills together at the end for the crazy challenge. So with our right hand we're just going to be playing a two octave C arpeggio. So here's the notes that you need. C, E, G, tuck your thumb, reset your hand and notice how my elbow's kind of leading me along. E, G, C, and now I'm kind of moving this way, pretending like there's kind of a string pulling me a bit. We don't want chicken wings, but we do want to let ourselves lead a bit. This is where we're going to try to get comfortable. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Let's take some practice, and in a moment, we're going to add in our left hand. So get it ready on C. Let's play it here. left hand to A, but keep our right hand exactly where it is for now, just because it's a little bit less to think about while we're getting used to this, to F, and again, and back to C. Okay, so once you've got that, I want you to move hold with your left hand. Just that first original arpeggio pattern that we learned. Let's do it again. And I'm going to do one more. Really slow down together, 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 together. And then we just hold here. Now let's move this hand to A. This hand stays here. Mm, pay attention, Lisa. See, because my brain is thinking about being in this A arpeggio here, and my brain is also thinking about being in the C arpeggio here, it gets scrambled sometimes. And that's the whole point. Can I stay engaged with this process and do different things with each hand? One more time through. We're working our brains, we're working our hands, and back to C. Now there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do this, creative variations. We've covered a lot of ground so far, and the last thing I want to leave you with is my final challenge, where we combine a crazy rhythm in our left hand, doing this more spa arpeggio sound. It'll be like this. It's like a swing rhythm, but don't worry about that yet going to walk you through it and a two octave arpeggio in this hand so first let me demonstrate what I want you to do but don't go anywhere don't look at it and be like that's crazy Lisa you can do this I'm gonna walk you through it it's gonna sound like this yeah <laughs> you see what I mean it's tricky but I'm gonna walk you through it so fun to work the brain. So what I've done there is I've literally played a swing rhythm in my left hand on the spa arpeggio and a two octave arpeggio in my right hand with the normal rhythm. And the only way to do this is to put one hand on autopilot. And how do you know you really know something is when you can perform that action without having to really actively engage your brain with it. So this is, this is a beautiful process. So let's start by just talking about how this lines up. So this right hand is probably the easiest hand to put on autopilot. And how do I know it's on autopilot? Because I'm talking to you. I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. I'm trusting my fingers know where to go. And once I'm kind of good here, I'm established, I'm gonna play. That's a good starting point. So if you can do 
that, you can put it together a little farther. Let's do that again. And when you're ready, to think about what my right hand was doing and then and then I got lost so this really will test your ability to focus on this or this while this is doing this or this that doesn't make a lot of sense but I think you know what I mean so go very slow to begin and the goal here to to pass this challenge is to be able to play this and then move the left hand I'm super impressed with myself for having gone through that without any mistakes because <laughs> it's really not the easiest thing in the world to do. So wasn't that a fun adventure? We got to practice our arpeggios, our hands are feeling like they got to work out. You may want to just shake them out now. You can even give them a beautiful stretch. Put your palm, this is the thumb, put your thumb inside the palm of your hand and push your wrist forward like this. Oh my gosh, it feels so good through here. Nice good wrist stretch. You can do this way, you can do this way. Yes, you can shake out your wrists, roll your shoulders, pat yourself on the back, go have some cake because you've just accomplished something great. So thank you so much for playing along with me. Comment below if you have any questions and most of all, happy practicing.